ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد حدثني جماعه من الشيوخ باسناد كل الى سفيان بن عيينه عن عمرو بن دينار عن ابي قابوس عن عبد الله بن عمرو بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الارض ارحموا من في الارض يرحمكم من في السماء the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a tremendous hadith that those who are merciful they will be shown mercy by the most merciful be merciful and show mercy to those who are in the earth and the one who is above the heavens he will show you mercy the ulama they mention ذلك بان العلم رحمه This is because knowledge is mercy. This aforementioned hadith is a hadith that is called Musalsal bil Awwaliyah. It is a hadith that many of the Imams of hadith they will utilize this hadith as the first hadith that they will teach their students. They mention the ulama they mention the reason for this the an al-ilm rahma because knowledge is mercy. Ghayatuhu fi dunya rahma aw natijatuhu fi dunya rahma wa ghayatuhu fi al-akhirati rahma. its goal or its purpose or its result in this world is mercy and the ultimate goal of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter ma'am so we continue going over the tremendous hadith the tremendous uh, book of hadith by imam an-nawawi his 40 hadith and we are on the tremendous hadith as all of the hadith inside of this book are tremendous with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he goes on to explain to us the manner in which the evil deeds are written down and this is as comes in the hadith al-qudsi naam so more accurately allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he explains to us the manner in which deeds are written down as it comes in a hadith عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن ربه فيما رواه عن ربه تبارك وتعالى وي الله تعالى هي سيز ان الله كتب كتب الحسنات والسيئات that Allah has written down the righteous deeds the good deeds and the evil deeds thumma bayyana dhalik and then he explained it in detail the manner and the method by way in which good deeds and bad deeds are recorded fa man hamma bi hasana so ever intends to do a good deed fa lam ya'malha but he does not have the ability to do it he doesn't do it he doesn't do it كتبه الله عنده حسنه كامله 
that Allah writes for him a complete good deed. وَإِنْ هَمَّ بِهَا فَعَمِلَهَا كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ عَشْرَ حَسَنَاتٍ And if he intends to do it, and then he does it, then Allah writes with him ten good deeds. Ten good deeds. إِلَى سَبْعِمِئَةٍ ضُعِفٍ Until multiplied by seven hundred times. إِلَى أَضْعَافٍ كَثِيرًا Until multiplied way more than that. Until it is multiplied, way more than that. Naam. This is for the one who intends to do a good deed and they do the good deed. وَإِنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ This is the portion of the hadith that we have reached for today's lesson, for today's class. Where Allah Ta'ala, he says, as it comes in the hadith of the Qudsi, وَإِنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ But if they intend to do a evil deed. They intend to commit a sin. فَلَمْ يَعْمَلُهَا But they don't commit the sin. They don't commit the sin. And بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى will come to see why they don't commit the sin. Naam? Because there is a difference. There is a difference. The abandonment of sin, they're not all the same. Or the reason why sin is not committed, it's not all the same. Naam? If they intend to do an evil deed, but they do not do it, then Allah will write with him for that individual a complete good deed. A complete good deed. And but if they intend to do the evil deed and they actually go through with it and they do it, then Allah writes it down as one evil deed. Then it is written down with Allah as one evil deed. Hadith on Sahih, Rawahu al Bukhari wa Muslim. This hadith is authentic. And it has been collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So this hadith is a hadith that is mutafiqun alay. It's a hadith that is agreed upon. And the ahadith that are agreed upon, their authenticity by Al-Bukhari and by Muslim, by Imam Al-Bukhari and by Imam Muslim, then this is the highest level of authenticity when it comes to the ahadith. This is the highest level of authenticity as it comes to the hadith. So that's something that's very important for us to know. That if we see a hadith and it's been collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, then this hadith is the strongest level of authenticity. This hadith is authentic. Because if there comes a hadith and it's collected by Al-Bukhari alone, then we know this hadith is sahih. It is correct. It is authentic. If a hadith comes and is collected by Muslim alone, then we know that this hadith is authentic. So those ahadith that they have, both of these imams have agreed upon their authenticity, then this is the strongest level of authentic hadith. Allah Ta'ala, he says here in this in his portion of the hadith, this hadith al-Qudsi, وَإِنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةِ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا And if he intends to do an evil deed, if they intend to do an evil deed but they don't do it, then it is written with Allah. Allah writes it with him as one complete good deed. And if the person intends to do an evil deed and they actually go through with that evil deed, then it is written down as one, one, Evil deed, one sin. The Fadil to Sheikh Muhaddith al Medina, Al Alama, Al Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Al Abad al Badr, Hidhullah Ta'ala, he mentions, he says, Wawusifat al Hassana, Ala Turk al Ma'asiya, Al Mahmoom, Biha, Bi An Naha Kamila, Li Allah Yatawaham. نقصانها. This is a very important point. 
Inshallah ta'ala, for those who are taking notes, this is a note that uh, I encourage you to write down, inshallah ta'ala. Naam. And in general, in general, no one should attend any type of religious talk or lecture or class or whatever the case may be, except that they should have a pen and a paper. Or they should have its equivalent from the modern tools and means of recording information. So if that means a, a tablet, right, or if that means a, a laptop, if you prefer to type it, or if that means, yeah, any, even on the memo portion of your cell phone, then you should be taking notes, inshallah, ta'ala, so you can write down the fawa'it, you can write down the points of benefit, you can write down those things that jump out at you uh, as uh, as important, right? Those things that you find, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of value in that you want to remember. Write those points down, inshallah ta'ala, then we'll go back to them later and review them. Right? So no talk, no lecture, any no class um should you attend except that you should have some kind of uh, means of recording the information that is contained therein. Just coming and passively listening, I mean, you know, <laughs> Allah Mustain. We know from our own experience in each and every individual, you ask yourself this, right? When we have gone somewhere, you've just sat, sat there and passively listened. You know, how much did you really get out of it? How much did you really benefit from it? How much did you walk away from it? And if you want a um, a metric by way in which we can judge that, just think about the last class that you sat and you, les- and you listened to, right? How many points of benefit from that class could you mention right now? Okay, if you want to, right? Um, for those who are listening to the recorded portion of this of this talk, pause it and then write down how many points of benefit could you can you recall right now off the top of your head from the last class you sat in and listened to, ten, you know, passively, from the last lecture that you sat in and you listened to passively. Write it down right now. How many points of benefit could you come up with? And I think for the vast majority of us, of course, there are always some outliers right, who can, you know, recall great deals just from that man. But the most, the vast majority of the people, then, uh, inshallah ta'ala, we get the point. In any event, ala kulli hal, you need to write this one down. The sheikh, he mentions, he says that the good deed that is left for the sake of Allah, the good deed that, uh, excuse me, the evil deed, the evil deed that is abandoned, the evil deed that is abandoned, na'am, and I'm putting in parentheses here, for the sake of Allah, and we'll come to see that later, inshallah, ta'ala, very shortly. The good deed, uh, the evil deed, excuse me, that is abandoned for the sake of Allah, that evil deed that a person, they wanted to do it, but they didn't do it. It is described, it is described that it is complete is described that it is complete that a person gets a complete good deed okay so the evil deed that is abandoned for the sake of allah the person will get a complete good deed written down right so i want i want to make sure i'm saying that in a way that makes sense when you leave off a sin for the sake of allah then you get a complete good deed. So that good deed, al-hasana, is kamila, complete, a full good deed. Why? So that it is not misunderstood into thinking that it is a piece of a good deed, that you get a portion of a good deed, but not a whole good deed, because it's coming off of an individual intending to do a sin, but then they don't do the sin because they leave it for Allah, so then they get, you know, a person may understand, okay, they get something from good, half a good, quarter of good, a third of good, so on and so forth. No, no, no. So that so that there's no misunderstanding. They get a good deed, a complete good deed, a full good deed, 100% of a good deed. That makes sense? All right. What we'll see if that's a sayyia, and the evil that a person intends to do, and then they do it. Al-ma'moola bi-wahida. 
and the evil that a person intends to do and they actually go through with it and they actually do it, then that is written down as one evil deed, one sin, right? One, just one. Why? لِأَلَّا يَتَوَهَّمْ لِأَلَّا يُتَوَهَّمْ لِأَلَّا يُتَوَهَّمْ زِيَادَتُهَا So that it is not misunderstood that it is eligible to be increased. So it is specified one sin. So a person will think that perhaps they do one sin and it could equal two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sins or what have you. Allah Ta'ala makes it very clear that they get sayyi'ah wahida. One sin. One sin. Now I want you to reflect back. If you intend to do a good deed and you actually do the good deed, then you get 10 good deeds is multiplied by 10 all the way up to 700, all the way up to even more than that. Multiply for what? For one good deed that you intended to do and then you did it. Okay? So one good deed, you intended to do it and then you actually did it. Then by default, you get 10. It's multiplied by 10. It's like you did 10 good deeds. All the way up to 700 good deeds. All the way up to way more than that. So you do one good deed, depending on your ikhlas, how well you perform this, so on and so forth, it gets multiplied. So for that one good deed, it may be written for you that you did 500 good deeds. Or it may be written for you that you did 400 good deeds. Or it may be written for you that you did 700 good deeds. Or it may be written for you that you did way more than that. But at the very minimum, you get what? 10. 10 good deeds. That's for what? A good deed that you intend to do and you did it. Okay, the flip side. An evil deed. You intended to do it and then you actually did it. You get how many sins written against you? One. Just one. That's it. Allahu Akbar. Do, do you see that? Do you see the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has bestowed upon us? Now, imagine this. Imagine you intend to do a sin, and then you do the sin, so you get one sin written against you. And then you turn around and make tawbah for that sin, and then that one sin that was written against you is now erased. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When you reflect on it, when you really reflect on it, you realize and you understand that those individuals that have to go to hell, they deserve it. Those individuals that have to go to hell, they deserve it. And they are there because of what their own hands have put forward. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many opportunities to benefit. Many opportunities to gain good for ourselves. So if we find ourselves destroyed, blame no one but yourself. We are to blame no one but ourselves. We destroyed ourselves. Now, in any event, uh, the Sheikh he goes on and he says, وَهَذَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ that this is from the bounty of Allah and from his justice. Now, this is from the bounty of Allah and from his justice. وَثَوَابُ عَلَى تَرْكِ السَّيِّئَةِ أَلَّتِي هَمَّ بِهَا يَحْصُلُ إِذَا كَانَ تَرْكَهَا مِنْ أَجْلِ اللَّهِ Is that the good deed that a person will get for, for leaving off a bad deed, that is only if the sin was abandoned for the sake of Allah. Now, so you only will get a good deed, a complete good deed, for leaving off a bad deed if you abandon that bad deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember Allah. You say to yourself, stuck for I can't do this. I have to fear Allah. So you don't do it. Then you get a good deed. Then you get a good deed. 
حريصا على فعل السيئة. But if, but if he is uh, diligent, he's very determined. نعم, working very diligently and hard to do the evil, to do to do the evil deed. وقلبه متعلق بها, and his heart is connected to doing that evil deed. وهو مصمم على فعلها لو قدر على ذلك and this individual is determined to do it if he is able to right فهو مؤاخذ على ذلك meaning that if the person he's, he, he, he's trying to do it to the best he can he's doing everything he can to do it His heart is attached to it. And he is determined that if he gets the opportunity, then he's going to do this evil deed, then that is held against him. That is held against him. Now, so if a person is intended to do an evil and they don't do it, not because they leaving it for Allah Ta'ala, just, but just because they weren't, they weren't able to. Right? Something had taken place and they weren't able to do it for whatever reason outside of leaving it for Allah then they are held liable. Then they're held liable for that evil intention that they had had. وقال Imam Ibn Kathir في التفسير Imam Ibn Kathir he mentions in his tafsir عند التفسير قوله تعالى In the tafsir of Allah Ta'ala statement, من سورة الأنعام, from Surah Al-An'am, where Allah Ta'ala, he said, من جاء بالحسنة فله عشر أمثالها. So whoever comes with a good deed, then he will have, as a default, it multiplied by 10. ومن جاء, ومن جاء بسيئة, فلا يجزى إلا مثلها وهم لا يظلمون and whoever intends to do an evil or whoever comes with an evil I should say whoever comes with an evil then they are not it is not written against them except one of its like and they are not oppressed in any which way shape or form نعم So if a person intends, if a person does the evil, he comes with the evil, intends to do it, and he does it, then it's written against them just one sin, just one sin, and they are not oppressed. Imam Ibn Kathir, in commenting on this ayah, in his tafsir, he mentions, he says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ تَارِكْ السَّيِّئَةَ الَّذِي لَا يَعْمَلُهَا عَلَى ثَلَاثِ أَقْسَامِ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةِ أَقْسَامِ He said that, no, that the one who leaves off a sin and does not commit it, then they are three types, three situations, three scenarios, that when a person leaves off and abandons doing a sin that they had intended to do, it will be in three different scenarios, three different situations. Now, sometimes they will leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person leaves it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what? Then, they, then that is a good deed for them. They get rewarded for that good deed. So he said, they'll leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهَذَا تُكْتَبُ لَهُ حَسَنَةٌ عَلَى كَفِّهِ عَنْهَا لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى He said, then this one, it will be written for him, one complete good deed, because he had abandoned it for the sake of Allah, the Most High. نعم. وَهَذَا عَمَلٌ وَنِيَّةٌ And this is an action and an intention. Now, this is action and an intention, right? So they get they get a complete good deed because they was going to do something wrong. They wanted to, but then what? They left it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they changed their intention from wanting to do something wrong to now, no, I'm going to leave it for Allah. Going to change that, right? Person, he stops. He says, no, no. I'm not going to do that. Astaghfirullah, that's wrong. I'm going to leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he abandons it. 
So he gets one good deed. So the Shaykh says, هذا عمل ونية. This is an action and an intention. He says, وَلِهَذَا جَاءَ أَنَّهُ يُكْتَبُ لَهُ حَسَنًا He says, and for this reason it comes that it is written for him, then thus therefore a complete good deed. كَمَا جَاءَ فِي بَعْدِ الْأَلْفَاظِ الصَّحِيحِ As it comes in some of, some of the authentic wordings of, uh, of, يعني, uh, of some of the ahadith that speak about this issue. فَإِنَّهُ تَرَكَهَا مِنْ جَرَّائِي Because verily, he has left it for جَرَّائِي أي مِنْ أَجْلِي He has left it due to my sake. Naam, left it due for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first scenario. That a person that tends to do evil, but then they, they don't do it. Why? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you leave off the commission of a sin for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is written for you one complete good deed. Naam. Imam Ibn Kathiri goes on to mention. And he says, وَتَارَةً يَتْرُكُهَا نِسْيَانًا وَظُهُولًا عَنْهَا وَهَذَا لَا لَهُ وَلَا عَلَيْهِ لِأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَنْوِي خَيْرًا وَلَا فَعْلَ شَرًا The second scenario is a person who wanted to do an evil but then they forgot. They wanted, they intended to do some evil, then they forgot. Now, so for example, a person wanted to say something disrespectful to their parents. Now, this is this is a sin. This is a sin. Okay, they want to say something disrespectful to their parents. And and as we know, the being undutiful and disrespectful and, and belligerent to the parents and so on and so forth, this is this is a major sin. Ala kulli hal. Person wanted to disrespect his parents, right? Uh, so he had in his mind this whole thing he was gonna say. When I when I see when I see my mother again, I see my father, I'm gonna let him have it, I'm gonna tell him. You know? And he had all this disrespectful thing he was gonna say. And then some time goes by and they see their parent the next time and so on and so forth, and they just completely forgot. They completely forgot this plan that they had had in mind. Completely forgot about it. So in this type of situation, they didn't do the evil. Why didn't they do the evil? Because they forgot. It slipped their mind. They totally forgot about it. So this type of this type of individual, there is nothing against him, and then there is nothing for him. There is nothing for him. Why? Imam Al-Kathiri says, There's nothing for him because he didn't intend good. So he gets no reward. He didn't intend to do anything good. Naam. And there's nothing against him. Why? Because he didn't. There's nothing against him because he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't intend good, so he gets no good deed. But he didn't do anything wrong. So it's no evil deed. That makes sense? This is the person that intended to do evil, but then they forgot. It just slipped their mind. They totally forgot what they had planned to do from the evil. So this individual, they get neither nothing in their favor nor nothing against them. Now, because they what? They forgot. Okay? What Tarotan, third scenario, Yetsrukuha. عَجِزًا وَكَسَلًا عَنْهَا بَعْدِ السَّعِي فِي أَسْبَابِهَا وَتَلَبُّسِ بِمَا يُقَرِّبُ مِنْهَا فَهَذَا بِمَنْزِلَ فَاعِلِهَا Then the third scenario is a person that leaves off the sin due to inability. Due to inability. Naam. Or due to laziness. Even though they have taken all of the means by way in which to do the evil. 
They've taken all the means to do the evil, right? But then out of laziness or out of inability, they wanted to do something and like say, for example, they want to do something with another person and they tried everything to, to, to do that thing, but then the person was didn't want any parts of it. The person didn't want any parts of it, okay? Then this individual is in the same station as the person who did it. They're just like the person who did it. The only thing that stopped them was because the other party was not, was, well, yeah, I mean, did not want to participate, right? Or something happened and they weren't able to do it. They weren't able to do it, okay? Like an individual, he, tried to, he, he wants to rob someone, right? So he does everything to rob this person. He plans it, and he, he puts on a ski mask, right? He does everything. He gets his, his weapon, he gets his gun, whatever the case is. He's going to rob this person. And then when he comes up to rob the person, he realizes his clip has no bullets in it. He has no bullets in his gun. It's a blank gun. And he knows this person is known to have a to have, you know to carry weapons. Right? So then at that point, what? He falls back from robbing him. But it's still against him. Why? Because the only reason he didn't rob him, because he came up short, he couldn't. That's the only reason. He wanted to. He tried to. But then at the last minute he realized, ah, I got no bullets. Got no bullets. So he is just like the person who did it. You understand? So that's against him. That's against him, as we mentioned before. That's against him. Because he because he wanted to do it. He just couldn't. What's the proof of this? Because I, I, this is important that we understand. Because some people, they have the misunderstanding that whenever you want to do some evil, but then you don't do it, you get a good deed. No. If you want to do something evil, and you didn't leave it for Allah, you're not getting no good deed. It might be against you. If you intended to do it, you tried to do it, but you just couldn't do it, that's against you. That's against you, period. The delil, the proof of this, is the hadith of the Prophet where he said, إِذَا الْتَقَ الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفِهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلْ وَالْمَقْتُولْ فِي النَّارِ He said that if two Muslims Come to uh, if two Muslims fight or two Muslims face each other off with their swords, they fighting. Two Muslims are fighting where they both have weapons. Right, the sword here is mentioned, but it's not restricted. So if two Muslims they have a, they, they they grab their knives, they grab their bats, they grab their guns, and they go after one another, huh? They fighting with each other, going after one another. The Prophet said, said, "Let me say, then the killer and the killed are in the fire." The murderer and the one who was murdered are both in the fire. قالوا, ya Rasulullah. So the Sahaba, when they heard it, they said, O Messenger of Allah, هذا القاتل فما بال المقتول They said, okay, the one who murdered, the killer, the murderer, okay, we understand why he's in the fire. He's a murderer. He killed his brother, right? Or he killed his sister. Or she killed her brother or killed her sister. Okay. They said, but what about the one who was killed? What about the one who got killed? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ قَتْلِ صَاحِبِهِ He said, no, he's in the fire too because he was diligently trying to kill his opponent. He was diligently trying to kill his opponent. He was trying everything to kill his opponent. He just couldn't. His opponent was stronger, was more skilled, whatever the case is, quicker on the draw, whatever the case is. His opponent got the best, got the drop on him, got the best of him. So his, so his opponent won and he got killed. But he was trying his best to kill his opponent. So he's in the fire. So this, is, so this shows us here that if you intend to do something evil and you're incapable of doing it, you didn't leave it for Allah. You were incapable of doing it, but you were diligent on trying to do the evil. Even if you didn't do it, it's still against you. Still against you. Now, so leave evil for Allah and you will get rewarded.
The Shaykh, he mentions some takeaways from this hadith. Some points of benefit from this hadith. So again, remember we were talking earlier on the pen and the paper? Okay, this is, this is what you want to write down, right? Six. The Shaykh, he mentions six takeaways that we get from this hadith. The first of them, إِثْبَاتُ كِتَابَةِ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ is the confirmation or the yani, uh, it is confirmed that both good and bad deeds are written down. Both good and bad deeds are recorded. Now, that's the first point of benefit that we get from this hadith. One of the first lessons we learn from this hadith. The second, أَنَّ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ ثَوَابِ الْحَسَنَةِ is that from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he multiplies the good deeds. That's from Allah ta'ala's bounty. He multiplies the good deeds. وَأَنَّ مِنْ عَدْنِ اللَّهِ The third, the third point. أَنَّ مِنْ عَدْنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَلَّا يُزَادَ فِي السَّيِّئَاتِ That from the Justice of Allah Ta'ala, He does not increase the sins. Person does one sin, then one sin is written against them. Right? That's from Allah Ta'ala's justice. You do one sin, you get one sin written against you. The fourth thing that we learn, and Allah Yuthibu al Hammi bil Hasana Ida Lam Yamalha. Is that Allah, He rewards for intending to do a good deed. But the good deed is not done, it is not actualized. Allah will reward that person by writing for them one complete good deed. One complete good deed. The fifth thing that we learn, Annaman. هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ وَتَرَكَهَا مِنْ أَجْلِ اللَّهِ يُكْتَبُ لَهُ بِتَرْكِهَا حَسَنَةٌ كَامِلًا Is that a person who intends to do an evil, but then they leave that evil for the sake of Allah, then it is written down for him one complete good deed. And the six Point of benefit, takeaway, a thing that we learn. At-targheeb fil fi'l al-hasanat wa targheeb fil fi'l al-sayyi'at is the encouragement to do good deeds and the discouragement from doing evil deeds. And then the Shaykh, Allah Ta'ala, he goes on to get into the next hadith. What I can, naktafi, we have al-qadr. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إلا اللقاء استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته